Thank you, sir. The President of the Senate, here seated as Chair of the Committee of the Whole Senate, His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Goswil Obot Akbabio, Commander of the Order of the Niger. And once my boss, always my boss, at the Ministry of the Niger Delta Affairs. So, sir, my boss, I also present myself to you today to hear your testimonial about me as your mentee in the Ministry of the Niger Delta Affairs, where you were my boss. We enjoyed a convivial relationship when we were both at the Ministry of the Niger Delta Affairs. The Deputy Senate President, all the principal officers of this most revered Senate, and in particular, I pay special recognition to my three senators from Delta States. Distinguished Senator Edith Daphinone, Distinguished Senator Joel Onowako Thomas, and Distinguished Senator Ned Woko, who are very, very personal friends to me for so many years, sir. My name is Festus Egwarewa Adeniyi Keyamu. Paternally, I'm from Delta State, in particular, Uwe local government area of Delta State. And maternally, I'm from Ogun State, in particular, um, Yewa South local government of Ogun State, Ilaro. And I'm also, I'm also a constituent of Distinguished Senator Solomon Adiola Olamileko, who is uh, popularly known as Yayi. He's my, he's my senator from Ogun, Ogun West. In fact, he knows I'm from the royal home there, my mom, where they call Oju Orono in Ilaro. And we enjoy a very, very convivial relationship. I also see so many senators here who are my mentors, my political leaders, who have personal friends over the years, comrades too. I see three, four, five comrades here who <laughs> we have enjoyed very excellent relations over the years. I greet all of you, sir. My appearance here today, sir, um, can only be by the grace of God, sir, and by the special benevolence and I repeat, special benevolence of our president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And I want to say a special thank you to him for giving me this rare opportunity to serve. In fact, why I say I give all the glory and adoration to God is that on Friday when my name was announced on this floor, I was already packed. My bags and baggies were already packed with my dad and my family. We we're going on a short vacation. I had given up any hope to be here when all of a sudden they said my name had been announced in from Lagos. So I started rushing back and we had to cancel all our trips to go on vacation. So I give God all the glory and all the adoration, sir. Briefly, sir, I am a member of the Inner Bar, sir. Um, I'm a senior advocate of Nigeria. I've practiced law for about 30 years, sir. And I'm also a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitration in the United Kingdom. And so I also practice international arbitration, sir. I was called to the Nigerian bar about 30 years ago, sir. And over this period, sir, I have used the instrumentality of the law in many situations to advance the cause of democracy, sir, and the respect for the rule of law. That has been the story of my life. In fact, coincidentally, sir, when our present president was in exile, fighting for the return of democracy in Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We were the young lawyers in Nigeria here who were empaneled by my late boss then, the late Chief Ghanifa Emi, who were coordinating the release of Nadeko leaders who were detained across the country at that time. Many of them. So that was the role we were playing Why our president was abroad at that time on the platform of Nadeko, also fighting for the return of democracy to Nigeria. So coincidentally, our paths crossed again when I joined the Action Congress of Nigeria in Delta State, just at the cusp of forming the All Progressives Congress at that time. 
and of course, we were the foundation members of the APC from the ACN in Delta State Sir, so my struggle and battle for the respect for the rule of law also led me at some point, sir, to fight for the rights of the Senate. And I'm sure you all know that, sir, that over the years, I felt that because we had left military rule, that it was important for the military to subject itself to this democratic institution. This is the star democratic institution that we have. When the military they take over power, they suspend, the first, their first port of call is in parliament, they suspend parliament. So because this is the bastion of democracy. So I felt that if I looked at, I looked at all the provisions of the law and I felt the military had to bow to this Senate, had to subject itself to the authority of the Senate. And so on my own, I wrote then to the Senate president, uh, Senator David Mark, I wrote to the then Attorney General, Andrew Aka, I wrote to all of them that, look, this procedure is not right. The military must come here for confirmation before they take their, before they assume, you know, their duties, the service chiefs. So I went to court on my own, on my own volition, and I won the case for this Senate, for the National Assembly, to have a, a voice in the confirmation of service chiefs. And that is what, that's the powers you are enjoy, enjoying today. And that is the case of Kayamu against the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which I won, and that was how I fought for the powers of this Senate. I've also served as a private prosecutor for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for so many years, before I was appointed a, a minister in 2019. And in that role, I, I served the country in prosecuting you know, economic and financial crimes, political exposed persons. And also, as a private lawyer, I represented clients across the country, both the rich and the poor. I had represented so many of them. In the course of that, I won so many of the cases. I lost so many of the cases, like all lawyers do. And of course, many of them are still pending in court. This passion for the promotion of rule of law and human rights led me to receive the global award called the Global Human Rights Award by the United States Global Leadership Council in Washington in 2017. I was conferred with this global award. And in 2019, sir, I appeared before this same revered Senate. I appeared here as a ministerial nominee and magnanimously, sir, magnanimously, you conferred, you confirmed my nomination at that time as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I was first at the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, where I served with my boss here, uh, Senator um, Gosler Fabio, and later I was also at the Ministry of Labor and Employment, where I was oversighted by one of the best senators I've ever met in my life, my friend, Senator Godia Akwashike. Luckily, he's back here today, and he was my chairman of my committee at that time, and we enjoyed very excellent relationship. There were one or two, one or two initial disagreements with him, with them, but later, Senator Akashiki and a number of the members became my very, very personal friends. In fact, we were, we were so close that he joked at a point that he would like to oversight me anywhere I am again because of the closeness that we enjoy. And thank God he's here today, seated. One of my best allies, best senators I've worked with, Senator Godisha, Godisha, Godia Akwashiki. So I respectfully present myself, sir, respectfully, for screening and magnanimous confirmation as a senator, or as, as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, sir. I, I want to... I want, I want to recognize the, the use of the word magnanimous confirmation after the screening. So, the CBC Navigate of Nigeria, uh, your brief resume is known to all, and the few cases you have cited also show your sarcastic in the legal profession. Uh, the CBC Senator uh, Issa Jibri. Your Excellency, this. Uh, no, 
no. When uh, once uh, once the point of order is raised, the presiding officer must uh, listen to the point of order. Order what? My order is anchored on section 88 of the Constitution, 1999, as amended. And I deliver the Mr. President to read out, sir. Thank you, Mr. President of the Senate. My name is Darlington Mwokocha. I speak for the entire Nigeria, Petagia Central in particular. Mr. President, I want to read section 88, 1, A and B, but I will anchor my position on B. Let me start from 1. Subject to the provision of this constitution, each house of the National Assembly shall have power by a resolution published in his journal or in the official gazette of the government of the Federation to direct or cause to be directed investigation into any matter or thing with respect to which it has power to make laws. B, the conduct of the affairs of any person, conduct of affairs of any person, authority, ministry, or government department charged charged or intended to be charged with the duty of or responsibility for executing or administering laws enacted by National Assembly and disbursing or administering monies appropriated to be appropriated by the National Assembly. Mr. President of the Senate, I'm aware that this National Assembly and this arm, the Senate, has three major mandates. One, lawmaking. Secondly, oversight. And thirdly, representation. And I know quite well that what we are doing today is a continuation of what we did yesterday. And I'm happy to have the nominee here, present, and he has said wonderful things, and which of them he said that he used instrumentality of law, which he is part and parcel of, to advance the cause of justice. And I know quite well as well that this House, or this Senate, usually uses the instrumentality of legislature to advance the cause of fairness. Mr. President of the Senate, I want to bring to the notice, because I've been a two-time House of Assembly member, two-time House of Rep member, and today a senator. And I was in the Eighth Assembly of the House of Representatives, and the Ninth Assembly, and today I am here. And I know that our rule book does not in any way exclude the continuation of free will drive of one section to the other. Having said that, Mr. Senior President, I want to bring to the notice of this House that sometime in 2020, that an issue came up. And that issue was the uh, public works program. We all welcomed it with open hands because this is something that will help our people. Today, we are talking about paying 8,000 to some people to make sure that it will alleviate poverty. Then, it was the amount of 20,000 to 1,000 persons across the 774 local governments, which my local government is part of it. And I'm sure your local government is part of it. And today, 1,000 per each local government minimum, 20,000 naira, has a great multiplier effect that will make our people cushion so many effects that would have led our people into a very greater height. But what really happened? At a point, we wanted to carry out our responsibility 
Because if some people can use the instrumentality of law, which they find themselves within the confines of their own authority, to advance for all their justices, why can't we use the instrumentality of the legislature to support our people and help the populace which we represent? Then, at that point, we invited the nominee because this thing has been a subject of controversy and public debate, which I don't know. We wanted to know and give him fair hearing. Please tell us because it's now within our own confines authority to know what happened to our constituents. Say, so please come and tell us what really happened. What is the structure? What are the indices you are using to carry out these things? Because our people will hold us responsible and accountable. And when he was invited, what we are talking about is a 52 billion naira appropriation, and the right of appropriation resides on the legislature. That is our right. And I know quite well that the right of oversight resides on us because we have to hold you accountable for whatever thing we appropriate to you. It is our right. And when he was invited, he expressly told us to the public that we want to hijack his role, that we want to blackmail, blackmail us that we are corrupt, that we want to hijack his role. And I know that he midwife the process. Nobody's against that. He midwife the process and this falls within his own area of operation as the uh, junior minister for uh, labor and employment. Highly welcome. And not only that, he went as far as in the public line to say that when he was asked, how, which indices did you use to gain this? He said, in quote, they are not from the moon. That was too arrogant to answer Nigerians that way. Because we're talking about what we support and help our people. That is why we are here. Anything outside that, I'll walk away from this chamber. My interests are interests, and interests of everybody is our people. That is why we are here. Not whatever thing any person is saying. And today, we need to find out, Mr. Sine President. Well, nobody is stopping him from being cleared. No. And I'm happy the way the uh, president has sent so many people, great people here. We have questioned them, passed through the screening, wonderful people, and we're ready, as much as they are ready to work with the, uh, the, the, the system, we are ready to clear them. But not on the grounds of putting something under the table, not granting some people fair hearing, because I would like us to grant him fair hearing, since he has been running away from me, for people, for Nigerians to know what really happened. Because I wouldn't like any person to be holding that, because this thing has been subject of debate here and there. What happened to the 52 billion? What happened to the... But he is here. And it's our responsibility to find out. So, Mr. President of the Senate, I'm of the opinion so strongly that he has to tell us what really happened, but not here. We have to keep it down a little bit. We're not saying that we're not going to clear him. This is a house that can reconvert at any point. You can even call for an emergency and we'll reconvert. Because we would not like to what happened at the last administration where some people felt that the president was in charge and so many other things were happening out there. We won't take it this time around. We want a situation, we hold you responsible from the onset. Since Mr. President has started showing us the right hand, we must follow along that side to make sure that we work with him in that right hand as well. Therefore, Mr. President of the Senate, I'm of the opinion that we hold this down a little bit, and I move a motion that we suspend forthwith this nomination and wait until when this is clear so that he can freely work in our environment and tell Nigerians, I have perfectly done well because this record has been pushed straight. That is my submission, Mr. Today, President. I rest my case. Distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, the distinguished colleagues, the point of order raised by the point of order, the point of order raised by Senator Darlington Ugocha is noted. But on the motion, there is no seconder. But let's find out first. 
senator, uh, as uh, there, there's a motion on the ground. If you want, you can you can second it and amend it, whatever. Uh, I, uh, so if there is no seconder. Leader of, the, leader, leader of the Senate, the point of order had been noted. Now he also proceeded to move a motion, which has not been seconded. So, okay, okay, Senator Abaribe, let me hear you. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to second the motion, very ably moved by Senator Darlington Wokocha, that in view of Section 88B, of the uh, 1B of the Constitution, which mandates the National Assembly to go ahead and look into the conduct of affairs of any person, authority, or ministry, and where such a person refuses and deliberately stays away from letting the National Assembly do its work. And in view of the fact that this nominee rejected the summons of both the House of Representatives and the Senate, that I do support that this nominee should be stepped down pending when he decides that the National Assembly has that right to inquire into the workings of a minister and his ministry. I so second. Uh, distinguished colleagues, the, the motion has been moved and seconded. Those who are in support of the motion that the screening of the nominee be stepped down until further inquiries, say aye. aye. Those who are against, say nay. Yeah. Distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, uh, 
uh, speak from there, please. The sewage colleagues. I will put the question again. Give him the chance to talk. It's supposed to be fair. Uh, Give him the chance to talk. The 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 sewage colleagues. The the sewage colleagues. Point of order. <laughs> Mr. President, point of order. Mr. President, point of order. <laughs>